Good morning and welcome to Tuesday with TG Beyond. I am Jason. I'll be joined by my co-host Barry shortly. And we have a special guest, Rachel Donnelly today from Black Dress Consultants. And there she is. I think they're both here now. So I'm going to see if I can bring them in. And generally on Tuesdays with TG Beyond, we try to talk about a death positive topic. Talking about death accepting that it is going to happen to all of us, and then thinking about ways that we can make that easier for both ourselves, our family, and those we love. Hello, Rachel. Hello, how hey. are you? Good morning. Happy yeah. Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you as well. Yeah. How's it going? It's uh, fantastic. I Come mean, on. you, you know, Why we not? woke up on the right side of the ground this morning, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> yes, without a doubt. I just speak for yourselves. Time. Speak for yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not feeling it this morning, Barry? When you called me yesterday, you know, I told you I was doing magical, and you were like, well, I'm not doing that. But, uh, you know, so I was well, hoping that this morning you would be feeling a little bit of magic. Yesterday, I was between good and magical. And oh, okay. today, yeah, and today I'm between sort of mediocre and good. But you know what? I'm putting my show face on. Glad to be here. Rachel, great to see you. Jason, great to see you. Yeah. Yes, it's really wonderful to see you as well, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say it like you mean it, Jason. Say it like you mean it. <laughs> um, I, you know, and so we were, I was just starting to talk a little bit about what is death positive. One of those stages of, you know, when we think about the steps that you go through as a friend or family member or the per one of your humans is dies or is dying is that you, there's going to be a lot to take care of. Uh, our lives yeah. are not simple. Uh, I don't think they're getting any simpler as far no. as I can tell. Um, I just no. got a, just got another login for Ace Hardware now. Um, <laughs> no, I needed that. And like, you have to log in by a more hammer. Complex. It's ridiculous. I, I know. I mean, but you're like, you got to get the coupon. You got to get the 10% off. So I'm you're like, just... okay, Ace Hardware, I'll give you blood and a sleep study and everything in order to get that 10% off. So it's, it's fantastic. My, my key ring just looks like, you know, just, just, just <laughs> a bunch of tags off of it, like a janitor, <laughs> except I can only get discounts at stores I don't go to at this point. Um, I'm not even going to show you my key ring right now because I look like a janitor with all of the house clean outs that I'm managing right now. So it's really kind of embarrassing. <laughs> and so, Rachel, you help people when they're experiencing a death. Generally, yeah. I associate you with helping to get rid of all of the clutter of my, you know, of my family member who has already yeah. died. However, I'm sure yeah. we could do a Swedish art of death cleaning and do this beforehand while I'm still alive. Absolutely. We, we, we have the cake and we eat it too. So Oops. we, you know, what I like to say is we help families, uh, we help the living deal with dying. So whether that is helping someone to get more prepared beforehand and sort of button up and get everything um, organized and written down and leaving those breadcrumbs for family members writing down all of those accounts online. The average, you know, American um, internet user has 207 distinct online accounts. And every, every day I'm adding another one to my Dashlane password manager. So um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. So helping people to sort of get that organized, where are all of the things and then in the aftermath, when you lose a loved one, I sort of say we're like home edit on Netflix, but for death. Okay. What is, <laughs> what is home edit on Netflix? Um, they're like professional organizers. Okay. Um, yeah. So it, shout out to any of anybody who's watching who knows what that is. Barry, do you know what that is? I don't know home edit, but I'm good. Okay. Now, well, I, now I do. All right. well, now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, somebody, a couple of people have compared us to that. And I'm like, yeah, totally. Um, okay. So we're like project managers for, for death and dying. Um, and so, so we can, yeah. And if you're just joining and you'd like to, to Black Dress Consultants is going to be right up here in this yeah, drop down yeah, box. Yeah. This drop down arrow so you can give her a follow. She will, yeah. she will help you as you are, you know, confronted with a pile of chaos that you perhaps did not create yourself at that time. Um, the dumpster fires. I like to say we, we try to put out dumpster fires. Wow. Wonderful. 
<laughs> so, you know, I don't even want to deal with my own dumpster fire. What makes somebody want to go out and come in and deal with my dumpster fire, Jason's dumpster fire, or based on our conversation yesterday, there's a lot worse stuff than dumpster fires. Yeah. You know, I, I was standing in the Chase Bank parking lot several years ago after a couple of months after my uncle had died. I'd lost both of my parents. I was trying to clean out my, my grandparents' house, which had been in our family since 1890. My mom had passed away. I was taking over the care of my uncle who lived in upstate New York. He had the latter stages, going through the latter stages of Parkinson's and he had passed away. And so I was dealing with his dumpster fire of trying to get an estate banking account set up. And it had been, it had been a long ride. And I literally remember standing there and saying, why isn't there a project manager for death? We have, you know, wedding coordinators, we have you know, people to come in and help after you have a baby. We have all of these sort of logistical consultants and support that can help come in and help families manage those very big life milestones. And why isn't there a death consultant? So I was like, I'm going to create it because this is for the birds. I was like, this is such hard work. And after that time, I'd been an executor twice. And I felt like I really had a knack for it, sort of problem solving and figuring things out and leaning into hard spaces. So I was like, I want to help people and help manage the things that I, for when I didn't have that support. And I want to go in and like, I feel like that that's my gift now is helping to give families the space to grieve, whether it's by helping them to be more prepared beforehand or like I said, managing all of those logistics and administrative tasks after a loved one passes away so that they can get back to the things that matter. So it just really spoke to me and it, I just have like a renewed sense of energy every day when I get up and, and do this. I know it's weird. Everybody's like, you know, what is wrong <laughs> with you? Um, but, you know, I just... I sort of grew up around death. My dad was a doctor. I grew up going to the hospital, going to on, on um, house visits with my dad. Um, so I guess I'm just sort of comfortable. Like I said, um, I call myself like a real life little orphan Annie. Death becomes her sort of. I mean, wearing a black dress. So yeah, so that was a very long winded answer to what is wrong with me and makes me want to do this. We like long-winded answers. That means we don't have to talk very much or think very much. So we like to wind you up and you just go and, and that's all. I know. I'm like a chatty Kathy. You just get me wound up. And uh, I mean, I'm just re ready to go. I don't even, th it's funny to even think of like the, you said death project manager. It's like death as a project. Like, of course it is. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a project. It's a reflection. It's a whole, I mean, it's, it's so much, but I don't even, you don't even really think of it as a task. It's just like, sort of, it doesn't, when initially thinking of it, it just gets to the stage of like, Oh, I got to go deal with that. It doesn't even yeah. thinking like this is a project that could have a beginning and could potentially even have an end um, yeah. from a cleanup standpoint. Yeah. I don't even think of it as a kick. I mean, I don't think you ever call it a kickoff. Um, you have a kickoff <laughs> for your project. Very, that <laughs> No, I think off, kickoff is dead work, language in work? this case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, don't, I definitely don't. I call it more of like an intake process, but okay. um, not, not a kickoff. But yeah, and I think going back to what you were saying about being death positive, I think that that is why is because it's like we have to suffer in this silence or in this sort of vacuum with our families and we sort of put our heads down and we don't even think that, hey, we can outsource this, that we can, I can bring in experts to help me through this difficult process. And I think that it all adds up to this more death positive movement. And we need to like be talking about this because we're all going to deal with this at some point in our life. Yeah, what's amazing is that it's, it's almost as if each person thinks that the clutter that they may inherit is totally unique from everyone else. <laughs> like it's not like, Terry, I know you think your trinkets are special. I've gone through the costume truck now. They yeah. Are special. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have, I have, it's making me nuts. I've got so many, I've, I've got like a Boy Scout knife from when I was a Cub Scout that I can't part with. I'm, I'm, I'm bad. But you know, um, 
we, we say dying is hard on the living, right? And you said something yeah. similar. <clears throat> My mom died yeah. two years ago today, actually. And oh. I spent a month in Florida. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. But I spent a month in Florida with my sister living in her house. And mm -hmm. everything was organized, right? The financial stuff was in all the proper places. We had right. all the accounts. Um, the house was in a, a special trust to make it pass no probate. We had, had conversations around death. My brother and sister and I and my brother. That's like this chef's morning. kiss right there. <laughs> right, but it still took months and was really hard, yeah. even though everything was aligned. Yeah. What happens when it's not? Oh my gosh. Well, you know, when it when when someone dies a without a will, um, or not only not a will dying intestate, but when when they die and their family don't know what their wishes were, where their accounts were, what type of accounts there were, what kind of burial they wanted, did they want you know a cremation? Did they want to be blown out of a cannon? You know what what did they did they want? You know, it causes just sort of a domino effect of these decisions that families have to make. And they also, they have to become sort of detectives and make all of these, not only very minute, minute, but big decisions while they're trying to process their grief. And people can make very rash decisions. They can make decisions that they regret. Um, and then, like I said, it, it really just takes away from, from their grief. But, um, you know, so then it, it, and it's also it can be very expensive. Then you've got to do a lot of not only your time of trying to find, okay, where were all their accounts? Did they have a Facebook, um, you know, account? Where, where's their banking? Did it, who were the beneficiaries or were there any beneficiaries on that? So not only that, and then the tangible property inside the house, is this a $2, you know, Sterling Boy Scout silver, knife. but exactly. Or is this like <laughs> in, 19, in 1971 dollars, Jason? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did a post last fall where I was like the presumed superpowers of executors, where they expect you to be like an amateur detective, an amateur, um, you know, appraiser, uh, because you're like, I don't know, is this worth something? Is it not worth something? And so you were just on this sort of never ending detective hunt to, to track everything down. And it is time consuming. It is um, exhausting and can be very expensive in the amount of legal work and then other professionals that you have to bring in to help you put together that big puzzle. Oh, like a nightmare. My, my mother still talks about, you know, finally going through uh, my grandfather's belongings and like finding like what suit he wanted to wear. Like she found that yeah. out, you know, after you know, two months after he'd been buried, right. Because it was in the yeah. pile of things. Um, but we still like, we still bring that up. It's been like 12 years and we're still talking about missing that note. Um, because we didn't <laughs> go through that pile of stuff fast enough. Um, yeah. I don't know how that would have been yeah. prioritized, but, but it's yeah. just the idea that there are, there are some things that even when they have intention and are attempted to hand over, don't. Uh, much less if you don't hand anything over or, you know, believe that each of your Boy Scout knives are special. Yeah, your Boy Scout knives or, you know, sometimes I go through people's <laughs> houses and I try to do it with as much care and love and empathy as possible. But sometimes I'm like, why do you have 97 Sucrets boxes? Like, what, what was that about? Or... Yeah. Very. Sucret, sucret. I, haven't, I haven't heard that word in 30 years. <laughs> I'm like, what were you doing? And then, you know, I, I cleaned out a house or I helped clean out a house a couple of weeks ago where the guy literally had an entire shelving unit in his basement and it was floor to ceiling, left old potato salad containers, lean cuisine containers. I guess he was I don't know if he was like really, you know, hoping for a like a big, huge recycling project or if he was going to reuse those. I, I was just like scratching my head like, what? Why? So I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't understand. You know, I'm speaking to the sky and I'm like, I don't get it. But you know what? To each his own. I think one of my, uh, my favorite clean out stories is they were cleaning out the basement um, and then there was a jar with strings and the strings were labeled too short to use. 
It was a jar of <laughs> strings that were. Maybe they were going to put it together and make a longer string. But at this point, they needed something. We're not sure they got put with their friend. Um, yeah, I found so. I found a mouse trap that said didn't work, and the mouse <laughs> trap was still there. <laughs> And I was like, why didn't you throw this in the trash? But okie dokity. So, <laughs> you, you know, you, but the, no, the fact that you're, an, the, the fact that you are a, um, a detached third party can really help. Uh, in my experience, you know, I might be too emotionally attached. Someone else might be, but someone who doesn't have those emotional attachments can really help speed the process. Yeah, I can sort of be that voice of reason that ripping the Band-Aid off. I'm like, no, nobody wants that spoon that says Texas on it. Um, just throw it in the trash or that, you know, the the thumb. Um, oh, gosh, what are they, the thumbnail or the collection? You know, what am I trying to say? When you sew the, the thing you put on Oh, thimbles, thumb, thimbles. Thimbles. Jeez. I thought it was okay, an actual geez. thumbnail collection there. That was, yeah, thumb, <laughs> we thimble, really took a turn thumb, there. <laughs> we did, yeah. Thimble collection. I'm like, nobody wants your thimble collection from with, with each state on it. You know, it's they just, they don't want it. So you can, here, I'm giving you permission to throw that away. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Nobody's going to want your dad's underwear. Can't even sell that. Um, promise you. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the stuff that I find, it's, it's fascinating. I won't tell you then that I actually took a couple of handkerchiefs when my dad passed away. And I guess he had must have, I maybe had him from the army or something. He had his name on them, like, not like embroidered, but like written in like a magic marker. But um, so that that's, that's a problem. But even even like fine china, like the, the family yeah. china that great grandma had that was valuable and might be no one young people do not want china they do not you know it's 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 starting to come around a little sil sterling silver china there is a little bit of it a market but it's the big brown furniture it's just the saddest thing nobody <laughs> wants that giant you know 300 pound bed i mean i, I was literally at a house last night till 10 o'clock trying to break down these big brown beds that nobody wanted. And I'm like, well, Goodwill, you're about to get some really nice beds, but okie dokie. Nobody <laughs> wants it. I know I don't. You don't want me to drop it off with your Boy Scout knife and he can whittle, whittle it. it down? He can whittle exactly. it into something that's stylish. <laughs> I can whittle it into something scon, Scandinavian, maybe fucking Ikea bed if I whittle enough. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. We'll come back to that knife in a second. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so how do you, so, so a lot of these people, clearly some of the things that they're keeping, they're not keeping because anyone wants it. Um, why do people keep things that no one wants? Are they, they identify they're driven by part guilt. Of, why? Okay. Could you help talk about that a little more? <laughs> I mean, I, you know, that the boomer generation, you know, they, they were children of the depression. They kept everything. And so I think it's just like this never ending cycle of guilt. And, you know, even some of my clients, their family members will come in when they're cleaning out the house. You don't want this hand painted China that great grandmother you know, such and such painted in 1932. Um, and so there's sort of like this, this guilt from all angles. And we have this thing that we have to hold on to things because they were some extended family members, all of the pictures, all of the, the photos of people we don't even know who they are. Grandma and grandpa went to, you know, yes, see? <laughs> And I'm like, they went to Banff in 1973. You don't have to keep <laughs> the, 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 the double prints from 1973. <laughs> like, you can throw them away. <laughs> the double prints, right? Not, not the print, the double prints. Oh, man. God, God bless Wolf Camera. Do y'all remember that? Like, the days of the double prints. And I was like, oh, that was, that was a good strategy. But now, every like, we're all dealing with the fallout of the double prints. I'm like, Throw them away. So when, 
so it's so what that feeling is that doesn't let me throw something away is guilt that I'm throwing it away or yeah yeah how do guilt. I how do I do I just recognize that it is guilt and that's potentially Maybe misplaced or how yeah, do I deal with or, that well and how do I deal with guilt things. Barry <laughs> <laughs> you you know all about guilt in, 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 in 30 <laughs> seconds <laughs> yeah One, three, it's a three it's a three-step process jason sorry sorry rachel <laughs> that was a giant yeah that that's a big one i don't know if we can we can you know walk you through the steps of dealing with your own guilt in 30 seconds but that, that may be a longer conversation <laughs> um but it's i guess it's recognizing there is some guilt you're going to be and some, how do you, what do you tell your clients? Do you name that it's guilt that's causing them to keep the thimble yeah. collection? Or do you just, yeah. you don't, I, do you say it? Do you say it out loud or not? Well, sometimes I say, do you want to keep this? It's either a hell yes or a hell no. Sometimes okay. I, I use that technique and they're like, no, I really don't, but I just feel bad. And I'm like, okay, well, is there another way that we could, we could figure out how to, to sort of preserve this? Could we take pictures of this, of grandma's pie plate and have it framed? Or, you know, could, is there some other way that we could, like I said, preserve those memories without you having the physical tangible piece? Um, so, you know, there's that just, you know, really trying to get to the, and I don't get deep in the weeds of that. I'm like, we need to talk to a grief counselor about this. Here are a couple of options. But when we're going through those steps of like giving them the permission um, to just make that decision. Okay. So I think, Jason, basically you shame people into uh, removing their guilt, <laughs> I think is uh, what you do. That's a, yeah. That sounds nice and direct for me, so that works. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then, you know, I also want people to understand, you know, it's not just about the tangible things. It's also about those intangible things that they may not, they may not see now. And as, as I'm helping them go through their loved one's home, I'm like, don't you want to be a little bit more, um, you know, strategic and, you know, really try to plan ahead to help either figure out who's going to take not only this tangible stuff, but those pictures that are in the cloud and, you know, what you want to happen to those. And let's just be a little bit more intentional about that because those can be sort of the real, you know, just <sighs> casualties. And I use that word on purpose of, you know, after a loved one is gone, that you don't know where all the things are, what they want done with them, what, like I said, what's valuable. So being a little bit more intentional can go so far. So I guess one end of the spectrum is I won't get rid of my Boy Scout knife from once, you know, 1972 or yeah. three. And the yeah. other one is, yeah. is I'm just going to trash everything. No looking, only the dumpster. Um, <laughs> how is that approach taken? I mean, people have, how does that, I guess, I'm just trying to think of what's the other extreme where like, I don't even want to see anything. I just want someone to come in and throw everything away. So I don't even have to know that these pieces existed. Yeah. And, and sometimes they're like, I just, I don't want to even see it. You just yeah. handle going through the things. And if I find, you know, family photos or, you know, medals from Vietnam, I'll be like, listen, I found this. I'm going to put this aside for you. If you want it, here it is. I'm going to give you the thumbs up or the thumb down, but everything else is gone. And they're like, okay. okay. And, and I'm like, I'm, I've either donated it or we've had, you know, some charity come pick it up or we've sold it to somebody who can take it on and give it a new home and give it lots of love. You know, on the positive side, though, there is something really cathartic. I and mean, I'm thinking about the times where I've cleaned out a couple of places, and particularly in my mom's house, with my sister and my brother-in-law, who I thank all the time because we would still be there two years later going through now probably the dining room drawers. And he was very yeah. dispassionate about it in a good way. But, you know, you touch an item and it sparks a memory and you have a conversation and there is real value to that as part of the, the grieving process. Yeah. So it's not only yeah. about the stuff and the disposition of the stuff, but there is absolutely a huge, I mean, obviously emotional component to these things. Yeah, absolutely. There, re there really is. So, and sometimes it's just a process. Sometimes, sometimes people need time to sort of sit with things and be with things. And I'm like, we, we don't have to do this right now. We can come back in three, six months. It just depends on your goals and your timeline and what, mm -hmm. what you know, how you want to approach this. Yeah. 
Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's talk about the horror stories because we titled today, um, you know, after loss, uh, clean up and consulting, everything but the hazmat suit. You're obviously wearing a stylish black cocktail dress. You're not wearing a hazmat suit. I'm not. No, but, I should, but, why do I think to dress up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what are the hazmat things that sometimes come up? Um, if people were hoarders, um, if people were, let's see, how can I put this delicately? Um, not throwing things away that should have been thrown away or disposed of in a different, different manner. Um, when people have died in the house and the, they haven't been discovered for several months, that has been um, a horror story. Um, you know, two months after this client of mine, his parents passed away, unfortunately, and they had no idea. Um, so that one was, was pretty, was pretty bad. Um, yeah. there was, there was one where I had to coordinate a biohazard team to come out and clean out about a 200 square foot apartment in Long Island. And they threw away 175 bags of trash. Wow. That's a lot yeah. of bags of trash in 200 square feet. It, it was. Um, so that one was, was a definite extreme. Um, you know, you find people's, and we've talked about this before, you find people's Pandora's boxes of stuff that they probably didn't want anybody to see. Um, you know things that they've had some fun with, um, their, their nudie mag collection. Um, fun fact, you can't usually sell Hustler in estate sales. You can sell Playboys, but Hustlers are just not as high class as the Playboys. Who knew? Um, oh, let's see. There was another time the family had not known that three sets of their family's cremated remains were left in the house. And the junk company was about to throw them away. Fun fact, you cannot ship cremated remains via UPS or FedEx. It has to be the Postal Service. U.S. mail. You, yeah. you had to, you should have seen the poor sweet lady at the local post office. She wondered why I had three different sets of, of, of uh, three urns of, of cremated remains and why I was mailing them all at once. She was very confused. Um, so, you know, fun fact, $300 later, we got them back to the family and they were with their, their rightful owner. Happy ending. <laughs> Happy ending. And so Rachel, when, how do you, when should a person reach out to you or when they're, what are they thinking before they reach out to Black Dress Consultants. And so if you're just joining, Black Dress Consultants is right up yeah. here, give her a follow. Yeah. How do we know yeah. if we're ready to talk to you to help us yeah. get rid of our nine? Yeah, feet? yeah. <laughs> well, so I usually say if, if you, well, you know, we sort of have two different types of clients, those that were either helping with their legacy planning, going through those steps of writing down the Netflix password or Netflix account the ACE hardware account, all of the things, um, what they want to have, have happen to their Facebook account. So if you are looking to get things more organized beforehand so you don't leave some of these dumpster fires that we've talked about for your family, I'm always a good fit. Happy to give you a 30-minute free consultation. After a loss, if, you know, once you sort of get the death certificate, that's we can, when we can really step in and start putting together a customized plan of action. And is it helping you with the paperwork, the mailing off of the death certificates, the filing of the life insurance? You need an attorney for probate. And we just put together a very customized approach um, for that. If you need resources in the meantime, you know, if someone has just passed away and you're like, I need a great virtual memorial company. I'm like, I got you covered. I know the, the right peeps. Um, so we do a lot. You know, we what I want is to have sort of that continuum of care. And that's okay. why I feel it's so great for us, and us in the death positive community to be teaming up, collaborating, 
so that we can help provide those good resources and people that we can pass pass each other to and and then I'll say, okay, you've gone to to Barry and Jason. Now you're ready to come back to me and we're going to get things going. Perfect. And then do you think that the, so if a person who on the front end, so I'm thinking of the, I'm going to do some work on my legacy so that I don't just yeah. leave a mess yeah. as my legacy. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do I like every hour that I spend working on that ahead of time saves my family. How much time on the other side? Like, what do you, oh how do you gosh. think of that? Well, they, so according to caring.com, they say the average is between 420 to 570 hours of work that it takes to, um, to close out a loved one's affairs. Okay. So I can come in and because I have sort of streamlined a lot of these processes, cut that time down, um, get, you know, also take care of things that you maybe never thought about. Um, canceling their voter registration or their driver's license, um, unclaimed property. So I can, you know, I usually work with clients for about three months okay. to get things in a good state where they, things are in a good, a good place and they can get back to their lives. Yeah. Because that amount of time is 10 to 12 weeks, 40 hours a week. Right, how it's, long a that takes. Just to give a yeah. perspective, that's yeah. a lot of time. Uh, this is it's not a, a lot, a lot of time. And, and then you from know, a, I mean, if, if you've ever called any company to try to close an account, I mean, you know how long it takes. You're on, you're on hold. You're, you know, you're going through all the things. So let us streamline that for you so you can get back to shopping at Ace Hardware or whittling or whatever it is that you're doing. <laughs> that's all we do, go to Ace Hardware and whittle. That's a, that's a full-time job. Uh, um, and, and Rachel, you offer a, um, I know I've gifted a couple of times to people, your yes. in lieu of flowers package, which I think has yes. been greatly appreciated. Why don't you tell yes. us about that? Yeah, so if you, you know, in the South, we always give the pound cakes or the ham. And I know after my dad died, I never wanted to see another one of those again. And so we offer a, an Alua flower package where you can gift a family member um, a minimum of three hours of, of our time so we can step in and provide them with logistical uh, support to help them either connect them with resources that they may need, a, an attorney, a CPA, um, or we can help step in, create a customized to-do list for them. And, and then if they want to continue the engagement. And we have had such great, um, you know, just success with clients, helping them. And sometimes people just need 30 minutes to talk to somebody and say, I just need to flush this out and figure this out. And we're like, we got gotcha. you. Here's some things. You're good. Um, and just, just, and then they feel better. Sometimes they just want to talk to that live human to just get some feedback and some guidance and some wisdom. So if you want to purchase that, you can go to our website, blackdressconsultants.com. We do consulting all over the U S I have clients, um, California, um, New York, Florida. Um, if you're looking at legacy planning, I have clients as young as 42, and clients as old as, as 85. So it really runs the gamut. It's never too early to get your stuff in order. Fantastic. Um, and then even though um, I don't think you're a trained psychologist or a uh, cleric no. or chaplain, I'm sure there are times where you find yourself almost doing pastoral care, right? You're there to clean up a house, but yeah, someone's grieving and all of a sudden there's a I'm sure intense conversations and meaningful conversations and you're a shoulder to cry on as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to take that lightly because there are some times where it's it being in death care and being in this business is very hard. And I think that we absorb a lot of that of our clients. And there are times where I have to come home and sort of refocus and, you know, sort of try, try to really reflect on that and that and feel very honored that I'm helping that family member or that loved one through this extremely difficult time. I mean, I've had some really, really sad, sad cases. And I don't want, like I said, to slough that off and, and seem flip about it because it's very real. People's grief is very real. Um, but like I said, at the end of the day, 
Um, if, if I'm just there for them to cry as they're going through photos or their husband's ties, like, you know what, I'm there and I'm not going to turn away. It's going to be tough. And sometimes this just sucks. And um, I think sometimes people just need to hear that. So I'm happy to be that person, even though I'm not a trained therapist. Um, but it is an honor. And I think that is my biggest gift is being able to give families that space to grieve so that they can get back to either their young kids, if they're a widow, or their grandkids, if their husband has passed away. Um, so mm -hmm. it's a real, real honor. And do you help many people as they're moving into senior housing? So it's another <laughs> scenario where you're, you know, you're changing locations, you're getting, you know, the family house is going from occupied to vacant. Uh, you, there's a serious like condensing of all the belongings as well. Is that a time where you so there are, not, not usually? With um, that, um, we work together, but or I, I work with a lot of um, companies that help find the right um, community or senior living um, uh, apartment or what have you that, for them. So I have lots of resources for that, but I, I can work in concert with that. But I also think that's a great time, especially when you've moved and you've downsized for me to come in and help families put together what I call their black folder um, of all of their sort of their, their end of life and estate planning documents because everything has gotten reshuffled okay. and you need to have that ready to go. So that's a really great time for you to do either some, um, so, you know, just some cleanup and some updates and then to centralize everything, but I've got lots of resources for that. Okay. Yeah. It's just another, it's another life marker that you can use to absolutely you know, as, a, as an impetus absolutely. to start cleaning or organizing. Um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you want to want to reach out, um, like I said, I'm always happy to offer 30 minute free consultation and just be that, that person to shoulder to cr either cry on or bounce um ideas off of and, and help give you some some hopefully some good guidance to move forward fantastic so if anyone wants to reach out to rachel she's at black desk consultants right up here um yeah this is oh and can i put in please? can i put in one more plug okay so i also wanted to plug that i am partnering i have three new business partners um and we've started a business called professionals of after loss services it's that it's at after loss pros on Instagram. And if you are interested in becoming an after loss consultant like me and like my three other fellow business partners, we are launching a brand new exciting training program this fall um, for anyone who wants to learn how to do this and become a fellow after loss consultant. That sounds fantastic. That's a lot easier than having to go to a Chase parking lot and say, this is what I'm going to do. So you can, <laughs> you can cut the head. I want to say thank, yes. you, to, so say thank you to fivewishes.org. Uh, They're a great resource for sort of yes. starting to have that front end conversation, thinking of the uh, initial yes. path that you're going to end up taking that really is yes. something that experts such as Rachel um, can, and Black Dress Consultants can really build upon to help you. It's not a lot of the situation of having a mess to clean up at the point a family member has died is not unique. Um, being emotionally yeah. attached to items that are like totems that you feel you have to carry forever or you're not honoring their memory, you can separate those thoughts. Um, yeah. yeah. And, Barry, and Barry has a knife from 1972. <laughs> right. I've, I've got a pocket knife and I know how to use it. <laughs> And uh, no, and Rachel, thanks. I mean, I, I think we're very aligned and, you know, what Jason and I are really want to do is help people deal with that notion that dying is hard on the living by yeah. creating a continuum of providers who can help yeah. at various stages, five wishes, you're deciding your advanced directives and naming your yeah. um, medical powers of attorney and, and helping yeah. people because um, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And when people die, sometimes we feel very alone. And yeah. Uh, yeah. we're not the first people to go through this. We are not. We're not the last. And I haven't met anybody yet who's immune to this. 
Um, so we're all going to have to deal with it at some point in time. So hopefully all of us coming together and that rising tide lift all boats, um, we can at least make a difference in a couple of people's lives. Absolutely. Yeehaw. Thank Yeehaw. you so <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming to get that knife. I'm that was my rebel yell. Knife later. <laughs> Did you hear hey. me, Barry? I'm going to come grab that knife and just go throw it away for you. I'm kidding. Listen, I'll be <laughs> some Decatur and I'll bring it. We'll have coffee and I'll bring the knife and uh, we'll turn it over to you. Um, if anyone gets a chance to work with Rachel, we're very lucky. She's uh, twice as charismatic and delightful to, to speak with in person. It's very nice to have you on the live. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us for this Tuesday with TG Beyond. Yes. We, Thank you for having me. As always, yeah. look forward to the next one, if you'll Absolutely. have me. <laughs> that would be wonderful. We'll definitely have you back. We're excited to hear about the, um, what is this, the second, the After Loss after Professionals? Pro professionals of After Loss Services. Professionals um, of After Loss pals. Services. Everybody needs more pals. Ah. Wonderful. All right. Well, Good thank acronym. Thank you so much. We yeah. will see everyone next Tuesday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Rachel, you were a wonderful guest. Barry, it was a delight to see you again this morning. <laughs> All right, y'all get back to whittling. We'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Bye. <laughs>